and I've arrived in the small Polish town of Oswenshim which is about 35 miles outside of Kraków and uh, it's a town that's on the surface of things looks pretty normal, pretty typical Polish town but it holds the story of some of the most heinous and horrific acts against humanity in the history of planet Earth. And if I uh, turn around here a little bit to the left you can see that I'm standing just inside the grounds of Auschwitz concentration and extermination camp. It's now a museum and I'm going to go inside and take an organized tour to learn a little bit more about what happened here during World War II. Well just to give you an idea of numbers 1.3 million people came to Auschwitz or one of its satellite camps during World War II and out of those 1.3 million 1.1 million were murdered in the gas chambers. The vast majority of those were Jews. People that weren't murdered were either used for hard labor and worked to death or they were used in medical experimentation or they were individually executed or perhaps they died by some other means uh, like an illness or a disease. So we're going to head towards the main gate now. So this is the main entrance gate to Auschwitz 1. The sign above it says Albert Nacht Frei, which is translated into English, work sets you free or work makes you free. Of course, it didn't because this wasn't a work camp. You didn't come here to work primarily. If you came to Auschwitz, chances are you weren't going to be walk walking back out of these gates. Six million Jews died in the Holocaust. One in six of them died at Auschwitz. So let's go inside the camp and take a, a look around. First thing you'll notice is it's very well preserved. Most of the other camps were destroyed or partially destroyed but this particular camp is mostly still standing as it was in 1945. Okay so this area was the center of the camp and it's where roll call would happen every morning. The SS guards would keep everybody here no matter what the weather was until he was happy or he was happy that everybody was present and no one had escaped. If the weather wasn't too good, didn't really matter, the SS guard would use that little watch area to hide from inclement weather. And just over here, that's where public hangings would happen and would take place. Mainly to not only humiliate the people they were hanging, but to send a message out that if you tried to escape, the SS would probably take 10 of your friends, 10 of your family and hang them. And that's where it used to happen in front of everybody. This is one of the main hospital blocks. In this room here, the lethal injection chamber. This block has been turned into a museum on extermination. It's not very good lighting, but this is a map of Europe. There's Auschwitz there in the middle. And this shows where prisoners of Auschwitz and people killed here at Auschwitz had come from. So as far north as Oslo in Norway, 
Easter's Russia. South as Corfu and mainland Greece. Italy. And then as far west as Paris. So this is the building where the Nazis trialled the first use of Zyklon B that they would later use in the gas chambers to kill millions of people. But it was first trialled here where they took 600 Soviet prisoners of war and 250 sick and disabled Jewish, uh, Polish people, sorry, and killed them using Zyklon B to test its effectiveness. So this area between two blocks is known as the Death Wall. It's where individual executions were carried out. People were lined up against the wall and shot. You know, you can see why escapes were few and far between. Not only was there a double layer of fencing, but the fencing was electric. The electric pulsing through here was enough to kill you if you touched it, so people generally stayed away. So I'm inside one of the blocks now that serves as a museum dedicated to the material proof of crimes taking place here at Auschwitz. And these are the things that were found when the camp was liberated and closed down. An example would be these thousands of pairs of glasses that were taken off just before they went into the gas chamber. Jewish prayer shawls, again taken off just before they went into the gas chamber on instruction of the SS guard on duty at the time. So the prisoners were told to write their name on their cases so they could find their cases when they leave the showers. Here's some samples of those cases. And this is the piles and piles of shoes Again, the prisoners were told to take their shoes off, tie them up so they could find them easier when they came out of the shower at the other end. Obviously, that was a lie. It was so the people sorting the shoes could match them up easier and reuse them easier. Absolutely horrific. The amount of shoes is just staggering. This is a photo of Hungarian Jews arriving at Auschwitz-Birkenau, preparing for selection process, which I'll tell you about later on. This is before the selection process at Birkenau. People waiting in line and then another photograph of Hungarian Jews arriving. Finally, this is quite a famous photograph because it shows some more Hungarian Jews stepping off the train at Birkenau. These people would have been sent directly into the gas chambers. And it's pretty horrific when you see who's here. There are men, women, and lots of children. A photograph taken illegally by the Sonder Commando, who were the appointed people in charge of carrying out Nazi chores like burning bodies and making sure no one was escaping. 
The Sonder commandos were usually Jews or prisoners that had been pushed up the hierarchy to become kind of supervisor kind of people. Some of them found cameras in the belongings of dead Jews and used the camera to take these unauthorized photographs. And you can see in the photograph Nazis, SS officials burning bodies because they didn't have enough space in the crematorium or the furnaces, they couldn't burn them quick enough. So they burned them in the open air. Canisters of Zyklon B, which was the gas used to poison people in the gas chambers. So here's a map of Osvenshim and the local area. You can see where we are is Auschwitz, which is here. That's the camp, but compare that to Auschwitz 2, Birkenau, three kilometers away. There we go, designed for the mass murder of Jews and anybody else that got in the Nazis' way. There was also a third camp called Monowitz, which was a labor camp, and that's down here. And you can see, if I step back a bit, the train lines. That will become important later when we go to Auschwitz to Birkenau. Train lines come from all over Europe. Well, I'm just about to leave this part of the museum. And the last room I just passed through was one that contained human hair. Just like the Mountain of Shoes, there was a mountain of human hair that had been removed from dead bodies after the SS had gassed them to death before they were cremated. The hair was then used in the textile industry and making rugs and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you're asked not to video or photograph any of it, so I didn't. But again, it is a really horrific sight. Heading in now towards the gas chambers. So this is the gas chamber and crematorium. It's the only gas chamber that still exists in its entirety. It still exists because towards the end of this camp it was used as a bomb shelter, believe it or not, by the SS officials. There's the chimney of the crematorium. So we're going to go in and take a closer look. Not allowed to talk in there. Uh, there's a sign asking for silence to be maintained. Just outside the gas chamber is a group of people that holding up the Israeli flag and I think remembering what happened here. Okay well it's approaching the end of our tour here at Auschwitz uh, but we're not over yet. As I said Earlier, Auschwitz had a number of satellite camps, over 40 satellite camps in total. Two of them were extremely large and very well known, Auschwitz II Birkenau and Auschwitz III Monowitz. Auschwitz III Monowitz was a labour camp and that no longer exists today. But Auschwitz II Birkenau 
not only exists, but it still has a lot of the infrastructure that the SS used to kill people as quickly as they possibly could. And as I said before, this camp worked as they wanted it to, but it just wasn't big enough. It couldn't handle the amount of people they wanted to kill. And it couldn't handle the destruction of the bodies once they'd killed them because you could kill people a lot quicker in the gas chamber than you can cremate their bodies. So Auschwitz II Birkenau was designed specifically to handle the killing of Jews and other people on an industrial mass scale. Uh, when we get there you'll be familiar with the train tracks that run into that camp so that they could take people from the trains and murder them almost immediately. So that's where we're going to be heading next.